Okay, so we're going to take a look at some of the ways to use the system more efficiently, shortcuts, tips, tricks, that kind of thing. Um, so first off, just from the homepage, there's a few things that might not be immediately obvious, but make, make it more useful. One is these calendar events, if you hover over them, it shows you additional details about the particular thing that you're hovering on. Um, then you can click into that thing and it brings up the entity itself. So for example, if that was a container that is, is shipping out on X date. If I click on it, loads a new tab, allows me to view the documents, the logistics information, the costing details, that kind of thing about the, the actual container. So, so those events, you can hover over them to get a, you know, kind of a brief overview and then click on them to get more, all the details about that particular thing. These quick links, this are links into the things that you use most often in the system. These are customizable, so you can talk to your system administrator about the specific reports that you want to be able to access on a regular basis or um, just functions that your users will be using on a regular basis and it'll be right there on the home page. Uh, you can add new company news items by clicking that, that plus button. Anything that you add there will be visible to all users. So reminders, events, anything like that uh, is a way to share information with the rest of the company there. And then finally, these alerts. Um, these are also clickable. It's not totally obvious when you initially log in, but any of these things like this expiring lots alert, if you click on the plus button, which is over here on the right-hand side, and it brings you down to the bottom and boom, gives you a list of all the lots that you have in inventory that are expiring within X uh, number of days. So within the next 90 days or have already expired those lots. So you might wanna put those, sell those at a discount or, or something like that, or just move the inventory out before it becomes worthless. Um, so that's sort of just tips and tricks on the homepage. Another thing that's really useful that probably doesn't get uh, used as much as I would think it, it should is, well, you, we can look at it from both the product and the customer view. So let's, let's start with the product because uh, we might as well. So let's say we look at these sausages, for example, I want to click into the sausages and I can manage details about the sausages from the, the top area here where I can you know, edit general information, tariff information, upload documents, that kind of thing. But really down here below is really key information. So for one thing, if you wanted to flip between products, the very first tab that you see here allows you to switch to another, another product. So if you want to just go directly to another product, you don't have to go back out to the menu and come back in. You can just flip directly to the next product that you want to look at. So whatever entity you're in, the first tab is always going to be that entity. So it allows you to quickly flip to another record within that same type. But also within the product itself, like for this product, I have all the pre-filtered history for this product is all existing down here below. For example, this release explorer function allows me to see sales history specifically for this product, right? So um, this is every single sale, the status of that sale, who the customer is, the quantity that they ordered, the price that they paid, um, when it's due to ship out. So you have a total sales history of this product right, right from there. And you can, you can filter this further. Like if you wanted to say, I only want to see um, orders that are shipped, for example. So I would filter by status, equal shipped. And now it's giving me all the sales that have already shipped out for that product, just, just as an example. And the other thing is like this Venture Explorer, these are a total purchase history. So every single purchase um, that we've had of this product and the status of that purchase. So this is a container that's on the water. This one is at source. These are in the warehouse. So, so you have, you know, open and active purchase orders, uh, whether they're received in inventory, they're on the water or any of these things. So and you can also, there's links within these that are also clickable. So for example, if I click on, let me just do a more recent one. So you have the link into the analysis there. That's link at linking into the costing details specific to that particular PL. So this is PL 8195. If I click on the analysis, it's going to bring me into this venture analysis screen where it gives me a little profit and loss statement. So it's saying on this particular shipment, my cost is $2.26 per pound. So that's based on any actual cost we've received then plus any of the estimates. So in this case, we have estimates in place for duty, for drayage, for material, 
you have a sort of picture of what all those costs are going to be. And then that gives you your true actual landed cost per pound on that specific PL. Um, so that's, this is the, the Venture Explorer. The inventory is your current inv inventory broken down by lot. This is what you have in inventory for that, that product, including what's on hand and what's available. And I think there's also costing details. Yeah, so you get your landed cost out here on the right-hand side as well. If you are storing inventory in your own warehouse, you get the picture of the, the bin location of each of the available lots. Um, so that's kind of the way to drill down into product details. And it's not immediately obvious because you can't see it when you first get to the product, but if you scroll down below, you have all the history down there. And there's a similar uh, structure in place for the customer record. So if I go into a customer, say I pick this customer three brothers, for example, of course I'm, I can manage the data related to this customer on the top, but down below I have, I can flip between customers here. I have my, again, that release explorer is that sales history. So any of the sales that we've had, what products we've sold that customer, what quantity we shipped them, what price they paid, all that. You have the invoice history, sales order history, what quotes you sent them. Um, you can see like this Venture Explorer would be inventory that's currently either in stock or on the water that's shipping to that customer. So if you allocated things to that customer, but they haven't been shipped yet, that gives you a picture of, of inventory that's for that customer, but you haven't shipped them yet. Um, that kind of thing. So you have really a, the, the the total customer history and you know all current activities related to that customer is all available from that screen too down below. Um, another thing would be just sort of the ability to skip steps while placing orders. Um, some of this stuff is, is not immediately obvious either. So let's start maybe on the purchase side. Say I want to create a new purchase order, for example, and First thing I'll do is say, choose a vendor. Let's say I'll choose a company called Ban Rice. Fills in all the details that we know about that customer. I'm just gonna say, I wanna buy one particular product and I'll choose this top one. And which by the way, another sort of tip and trick while we're in here is if you hover over that, that little icon, as soon as you select the product, that icon appears and you can hover over that. And that gives you your current inventory for that product broken down by warehouse. Just give me what I have available in each warehouse, as well as it's also telling me I have a container on the water uh, for another 200 cases that's coming in. Um, so just kind of give me a picture of, of uh, you know, what, what we have on hand and what we have coming in. But let's say I want to place a new order for another 500 cases of this product. And there's different steps involved here. Under normal conditions, the different steps you would have would be to, say, issue the purchase order, and then from the logistics menu, you would create a container and so on. But if this is a PO that's going to be shipping together all as one container, you can just click this button right here, create new container. It's going to say, are you sure? Because it's going to combine everything together in one, one container. Is that what you want? You say, yeah. So it does that um, and creates the container right there for you and gives you the container number as a clickable link. So now I can click directly into that. Before I go, I just want to mention one other thing is that it, it changes the status here to PO issued as well. So if you're creating the container, it already skips the step of, of issuing the PO. Um, so I can just go directly into the container to manage it uh, from here. So now the container has been created, the PO has been added. Now I would just come here and enter the logistics details, but another sort of step skipping option here is, so initially the container is gonna have this at source status. Well, in this situation, maybe it's a domestic shipment or whatever, I'm not too worried about the, the in-transit time or whatever. I can just say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just straight receive this in right now. So I'll set the warehouse receive date. And um, I would set the warehouse that I want to receive it into. And um, now this is a little bit different situation because in this case, I have it set as a drop shipping situation. So um, it's telling me that because... I can't receive it into a regular warehouse because it's a drop ship and that's fine. But that, that would be how you'd skip the step. Um, and then on the sales order side, there's similar functionality where you can skip <clears throat> allocation steps. Uh, so let's say I want to create a new, a brand new sales order. I'll first select a customer, say it's company three brothers. And I'll choose the item that I want to sell this customer. I'm just going to pick that same product that we, that we just purchased. Say it's that one. 
and say it's going to be 50 cases. So in this case, I'm going to say, yep, let's, let's issue the order. In other words, the customer has confirmed the order. I'm just going to go straight into the allocation stage. So this link here says ready to allocate slash pre-allocate. Well, if the status is SO issued, it's going to give me the option to go ahead and allocate uh, directly from inventory. So first off, it's asking me, uh, assuming that I just want to set this to release to logistics, in other words, ship it out right away. And in this case, I can choose which warehouse I want to ship from. And it's going to assume I want to ship the oldest inventory. Now, if we want, we can drill down into the inventory and choose specific lots. But again, just in, in because we're talking about, you know, shortcuts and things like that, I'm just going to say, yeah, grab the oldest. I'll click done. And then it allocates that inventory against the oldest lot in inventory. And it also creates the delivery for me. It shows me on the right hand side here to create number delivery number 221. I'll just go straight into the delivery. And now I can manage details about the delivery here. If I want to generate documents related to that delivery, I can in the links area. And as soon as I put a date shipped in, then it gives me the ability to go straight to the invoice. So again, a link within the delivery into the invoice. This would be, I can send the invoice out to the customer right from here. I can post QuickBooks right from here. So it allows me to just bring me to the next step automatically. Um, one other point, or eh, maybe a couple more points I was gonna bring up in, in terms of the fast, the, the speed of order entry, one would be within the sales order, I'm gonna create a new sales order in this case. And I'm gonna, in this case, it's gonna be a drop ship. So I'm, I'm shipping direct to the customer as opposed to what I just did where I was selling from inventory. So let's say, all right, I'm, I'm gonna choose the same customer and I'll sell the same item. Let's say um, this. Again, we already talked about this tip, but that icon tells you what's available to sell. But since it's gonna be a drop shipment, I don't really care. Let's say I wanna sell them a thousand cases and I'm gonna go ahead and buy that right, right away as well. So let's say the customer confirmed the order. I'll set this to status issued and I'm gonna check this box, auto generate purchase order. So if I check that, it's going to check, it's going to look at all the products that are on that order. It's going to look at who the default vendor is for each one of those products, and it'll create one or many purchase orders and link it with the sales order. So now we have the sale and the purchase both created, and I have a link into the purchase order from here too. So I'll say, okay, I'll go ahead and, and create that. And then um, now I'm in the purchase order side. Now we already talked about this. I'm going to just go ahead and create the container right from the PL. And now I'll link into the container. So now I would, be, I would be managing the logistics details related to this container. I am um, uploading the supplier documents, entering costs and things like that. But let's go ahead and just receive this into a direct warehouse. And I'll say, this is, this is actually shipping direct to the customer. And now from the links menu, we have a link. It actually took the sales order, allocated it to this inventory. It created a delivery to go out to the customer. So I can just invoice the customer right from here. So it created the delivery and I'm now linking into that delivery. And then all I need to in, indicate is a date shift and that's gonna be my invoice date. And now I'm invoicing the customer right from here. So that's the whole entirety of a drop shipment. Place the sales order, auto generate the purchase order, automatically create the container. And as soon as we receive that container, it's automatically creating the delivery and I'm just invoicing it out. So you're skipping a lot of the sort of normal steps that you would do in the scenario, if you were say buying and selling from, buying for stock, selling from stock, that kind of thing. You're skipping all those steps. Um, couple last points just on the CRM side. Uh, in the quote area, as you create new quotes, uh, you have the ability to create sales orders directly from a quote. So let's just say in this case, I already created a quote and I can just click create sales order right from here. That's going to you know, go ahead and immediately create the sales order. And the same thing exists on the purchasing side. So from this sourcing area, as I'm receiving in quotes from vendors, I'm creating these, these sourcing opportunities or sourcing uh, offers, we call them. And directly from the, the sourcing, I can generate purchase orders directly from here. So in other words, I can take a vendor quote and, and generate it or create a purchase order. 
and I can take a quote that I'm sending out to a customer and convert that into a sales order. So a lot of the automation, you know, bring you from one module to the next um, in this linear fashion. So it allows you to skip through just menu navigation. That's the idea.